Show and I would like to introduce to you first our host, Mr. Sir Greg Morris. You may have noticed I'm not a lady, <laughs> but I try to be a gentleman. Uh, first, we thank you for coming. We thank you for your interest in what we do and what has been, these ladies have done all of their lives in music and in their families and their associations with uh, the reason you are here, with Elvis Presley. Uh, I meet many of you for the first time, and uh, I personally thank you for coming. Uh, this is actually your uh, talk show. I hope you have questions. If you do not, I do. <laughs> but uh, the floor will be open to you. Huh? Until then, please have questions. <laughs> yeah. Don't make us I've got some doozies. I've been thinking about it this time. He knows too much about us. I would like to introduce you to the ladies that you will be questioning today. This is Donna Tut, Ronnie Tut's wife. Next to her is the lovely and talented, my wife. <laughs> I love my princess, my queen, my all. Her name is Donna Rhodes. She's one of my favorite Donnas. We have a few Donnas up here. To her left, you know her, you love her. Her and her sister Mary sang on many, many Elvis recordings and uh, got to know the man very well. This is Ginger Holiday. The more I know, uh, I learn about Donna Presley, the more I love her, and the more fascinating her story is to me because she lived with Elvis, and her family helped take care of Graceland, and she's got some stories. <laughs> she has some wonderful stories, and she has an insight to the, to the man that you love, that we all miss, um, that many people do not have. She has a perspective. He comes home. And we're going to talk about that a whole lot. Ladies and gentlemen, Donna Presley. Uh, I'm going to open the floor to questions. And what I will do, since just in case everybody can't hear the question, please ask the question. I'll kind of repeat it. And then they can answer. Okay? Okay. Sorry? And they have a micro. Oh, good. Well, that that's even better. That's even better. Okay, please raise your hand if you have a question. Uh, don't be shy. No, no. Up oh, here. No. Okay. Here I go. Do you want Sylvia? Yeah. Here's one. What was the most uh, in impressive experience? Uh, what all the ladies experienced with Elvis? Uh, let's start. Uh, no, 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 okay, not her. <laughs> Donna, would you like to? Well, D Donna P. Donna P. Oh, well, geez, that's that's. Uh, all of them were fabulous and and wonderful um, and great experiences. Um, I have several, so it's kind of hard to choose from. Um, I look, I, here's one that, I, and I don't, I don't talk about it often because it's, um, it can be a little, a little sad, but um, it was very special to me, and so I'll tell it to you. Um, I was in our grandmother's room, Dodger, and I was watching television, and Elvis walked into the bedroom, and um, he came over and sat down in the floor in front of my chair. And he was talking to me about, you know, what I was going to do when I graduated from high school, which I was going to do that year, who I was dating at the time, 
uh, what I wanted to do with my life and, uh, you know, just where I wanted to go in life. And so I was telling him what my plans were and um, so forth. And he said, well, just remember this, Donnie. Always have faith in God. Always have faith in yourself. Be willing to work for what you want. And don't let anyone tell you that your dreams can't come true because I'm living proof that you can. So remember, never give up on your dreams because they could be just around the corner. Okay? Another question. Yes. I just wanted to know, would like to know if there still are Christmas celebrations in Graceland and if you attend there two every year. Uh, and um, how is the feeling then? How is everybody feeling there and then at the Christmas uh, celebrations that if there are any at Graceland? She, she asked if there are still Christmas celebrations at Graceland in Memphis and how she feels about the those. Well, sadly, no, we don't get to get all together as a family at Christmas time, uh, which is sad. But, uh, you know, we each have our own families and we all celebrate Christmas with our own families in our own homes. But no, at Graceland, there's, there's usually not. Please answer the phone. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I have a question for Ginger Holiday. Uh oh, in trouble. Would <laughs> that would be you, the only non Donna on the stage. <laughs> we'll make sure an honorary Donna. She's an, she's an honorary Donna today, yeah. and I'm actually Don Hall. <laughs> okay, Ginger, uh, please tell us about your first meeting. Were you excited? How did it all come down with Elvis? How did it all come down? The first meeting I had with Elvis Presley was in American Sound Studio. Um, if I go back to the beginning, it took take a while. Are you ready for that? <laughs> My mother took me to see Love Me Tinder when I was five years old. I sat in her lap, she cried down my back. Um, when I was 11, I used to play act to return to Cinder, writing the note, taking it to the post office, right? Uh, then about, let's see, I guess six years later, I was singing back up for Elvis Presley because someone who was in my sister's group uh, got laryngitis and uh, they were looking for somebody to take her place at that time and Donna was gone and uh, so thank you for being gone <laughs> because I my regret being gone <laughs> just for that she sang on a lot of other ones though a lot of other songs but um, so my sister called my mom, because I'm still in high school, and she said, do you think Din, Jin, what's my name? Ginger. Uh, uh, I, was uh, on, I was about to say, Donna Holiday, right here. She said, uh, do you think Ginger can come up and sing backup for Elvis Presley? My mom, you know, loves Elvis Presley. I'm a cheerleader at the time. I'm all dressed up in my cheerleader outfit. I'm also a Beatles fan at that moment mm -hmm. oh, in my life. I know, I know, forgive me, forgive me. No, no. But just wait till the end of the story. Um, so um, my mom, I told my mom, well, I can't go. I have cheerleader practice, you know. I'm 17. I'm at, it hadn't all caught up to me yet, you know, just who Elvis really is. And, um, my mom looks at me and it reminds me of sitting in her lap and her crying, you know, at the movies. And so she says, it's Elvis Presley. <laughs> You've been singing since you were in my womb. <laughs> you know, this is your opportunity, you know, and suddenly click, click, click. The next thing you know, I'm on a plane to Memphis. Anyway, my sister dresses me up and uh, tries to make me look a little bit more mature and like I know what I'm doing and I think I know what I'm doing right because I'm a teenager so anyway we go to the session and uh, we start working on suspicious minds and I was born knowing how to sing harmony it was just a gift you know and so I just fell right into place with everybody but all of a sudden the red light goes off the recording light goes off and through the door comes this horde of men, right, just coming right toward us. And then all of a sudden they part. 
and Elvis comes out of the middle and walks toward us and so gracious and humble begins to shake everyone's hand and he just kind of crosses down, hi, I'm Elvis Presley, hi, I'm Elvis Presley, as if we didn't know, right? And by the time he gets to me, I just want to grab him and pull him toward me. I became a believer right there. He's the prettiest man I've ever seen in my life, right? And I look down the row, and everybody else still has their hand out. <laughs> you know, and this look on their face. So that was my first meeting with Elvis Presley, and then I was able to go on. I went back to school. I studied music. I became a musician, you know, became a backup singer. I backed myself up, right, <laughs> with some knowledge. And, uh, and then I sang on a, very, a, lot of, a lot of his albums. So I'm so grateful to my sister and to Donna for not being there. And I'm so happy she's here now so I get to sing with her again. So yeah. I'm glad to get to sing with you again. I'm honestly not sure how long we're going to get to be here to do this, but there are there's some information that I've learned about these folks, these lovely ladies, uh, that I think would be interesting to you. And one is, and we'll just do this quick because I know that we don't have a lot of time. Roll down the list of stars you sang with or toured with, Ginger. Uh, let's see, Linda Ronstadt, uh, Roger Miller, Ray Stevens. Uh, I sang with Joan Baez on the night they drove Old Dixie down. I sang with, uh, let's see, who else? Carl Perkins. Actually, I found out the other day that I sang with every one of the Million Dollar Quartet guys. Wow. Wow. Johnny Cash, Carl Perkins, wow. uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, and of course, Elvis Presley. Wow. Wow. I just found that out. <laughs> well, that's very cool. <laughs> I'm looking for their, all of their albums right now. Yeah. You see my name? Please, please buy it for me. I'll pay you back. <laughs> Donna Rose. Donna Rose. Donna comes from a very famous musical family in Memphis that Elvis actually followed and, and begged to be on stage with before he became the giant that he became. And uh, there is a story in the family about something that happened in about 1953 and Donna's first time to meet Elvis. Unfortunately, I was three, so I don't remember. <laughs> but my mother told me the story all my life. But she, my mother was part of the Rhodes family band and she would go out on stage and do her solos in the, in the show. And then she'd go backstage. Well, Elvis happened to be backstage with her because he was going to perform that day with them also. And so she was holding me in, in her lap and uh, they called my mom out to do her song on stage. So she asked Elvis, if, will you hold Donna for me while I go sing? He said, yes. So, and of course, I, I don't remember because I was only three. But then when I got to meet him again when I was 19 at American Sound during the sessions, he came by to uh, to meet us one night, and uh, he, like, just like Ginger said, we all just kind of, you know, put our hands out and we just went, went numb. And so when he got to my to me, I forgot my name. <laughs> I don't know. Anyhow, but I told him my name, and he said, "You know what? Are you a member of the Rhodes family here in Memphis?" And I said, "Yes." He said, "Well, I remember your family very well," and he said. Uh, I uh, have great respect for your family. I, we go a long way back. I said, yeah, I've heard of a story about when you were at one of our family shows and uh, my mother was going out to sing and she asked if you would hold me in her lap while she sang. I said, I'm 19 now. Uh, if you want to do that again, I'll remember it this time. But he was so nice. I love it. I would like to ask the same question of Donna. Uh, besides singing with Elvis, she and her sister sang with a whole lot of other big, big artists. And can you roll them off for our friends? Well, at American Sound, uh, we sang on B.J. Thomas' Hooked on a Feeling. We did um, Neil Diamond's Sweet Caroline. Oh. Oh. And 
in Muscle Shows, Alabama, which is south of Memphis. We did a lot of work down there, too. And we sang on a guy named Paul Anka. Uh, you have a lot, baby. So we got to sing on that album. Oh, my word, we sang uh, with the Bee Gees down in Miami, uh, with uh, Olivia Newton-John. Oh, my word. Um, oh, John Cougar, no. John Cougar, Wilson Pickett. Wilson Pickett uh, Harry Chapin. Harry Chapin, thank you. Keep on going. You're doing well. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> John Cooper Bell. But uh, Liza Minnelli, actually, the actress. She went to Muscle Shows to do with Adam, and we sang on that. How about Al Green? All the Al, Al Green hits. Al Green, every one of his big. He, he recorded in Memphis, so we got to sing on Let's Let's Stay Together. Did that album. Well, we did many albums with him, and. Uh, we just uh, were very blessed to get to, just like Ginger, just to get to be in a, a time period of about 10 years where we, we sang a lot. And whenever you go into a recording studio and sing, you never know if it's going to be a hit. You know, just kind of leave. You do your work and you go. But uh, especially on the Paul Anka, You're Having My Baby. I remember my sister and I, when we left the studio, we, we, we worked for several days on his album. But we were kind of chuckling over the song, you're having a baby, we thought, that's so funny. It was kind of funny to us that we thought, well, but he, he was a wonderful writer. And then the next year it was released and it was the number one record, so we stopped laughing at that, you know, after that, and uh, anyhow, Mac Davis, so Baby Don't Get Hooked on Me, we sang on that one, so that's, that's enough right now. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Donna number three. Behind door number three. Uh, many of you know Donna already. You certainly know her talented husband, Ronnie. Uh, this is your first trip back to Europe since, since everything happened. May I ask how this is for you this time? Well, it's um, strange. But I, I always feel his presence is here, and I know he would have wanted to be here. So I came to represent him and see all of you people that have come so many times to see us over the years. And it's a real honor to be here, really. We're glad to be here. <laughs> and I have an Elvis story. Well, well I please. first met him. So, long story short, you know I was the flight attendant on the Elvis tour in 1972. So, we, one of the cities we were in was El Paso, Texas, and Ron had asked me to go to dinner. So, I went with them, and then when we got done, he said, well, would you like to go meet Elvis? And I said, well, I don't want you to take me up there because you think that's what I want because I don't really care about that, <laughs> and I, I didn't, and uh, he goes, no, let's go, let's see what's happening. So we walk across the uh, area out there on the patio, and we went up to his suite, and he was having a party, and Lynn Thompson was there, and um, he opened that door, and we walked in the room, and oh, my gosh. <laughs> you take one look at him and you go, oh. <laughs> right? Right. You just melt. He really was a beautiful man. Beautiful man. And the charisma that he has when he walks across the room, you, you know, you're holding your hand. <laughs> and you're trying to be cool at the same time, you know? You don't want to be no drooling, and <laughs> shaking. <laughs> But he was so sweet and very um, appreciative of what I did, and uh, it was it was wonderful, really. Yeah. We've had someone join us, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> she's a Donna too. Another, she's a, Donna, she, Lime. Donna Lime today. Actually, her name is Jeannie Lime. <laughs> And she is the wife of the great Paul Lyme, who is in the back. 
And I know there's a lot more to her than just that. Well, I hope so. Would you, would you, well, I know so. <laughs> would, you, would you mind explaining uh, uh, the beginning of your relationship with him? Because you guys go back to First school. First grade. <laughs> Six years old. We went, uh, his family had moved from Michigan, northern family, down to Texas. And uh, my family is from Texas for generations. In a small town called Troop. Is in East Texas and uh, you start first grade together and you go all the way through to the end of your schooling and we were in first grade together and then you know time went on I had a crush on him at 10 years old and I would get in trouble with the teacher for talking to him <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't get in trouble. <laughs> and then time went on, and he became a drummer. I was in high school band with him, and he was the drummer, and then he played drums for a rock and roll group. That, uh, And he was like a beetle to me. Long hair, beetle boots, paisley pants. And he was one of kind in this little town of 1,500 people. <laughs> and so, um, about 16 years old, we started dating. And he would play gigs on clubs or wherever it was. And I would help him load his drums, drive to the gig, sit there and listen to the music, and help him take the drums down and put them in the station wagon. Wow. And yep, that went on for a while. But still goes on. Well, you don't have to do that anymore. I don't have to do that, hope. but I would. Well, the, the life of the, uh, of the wives of, of touring musicians, it's like being in the military, kind of. You, you're, you're in, too. Uh, there's a lot to it. So both Donna and Donna, no, but Donna and Jeannie deserve a lot of praise for holding their families together. How long have you been married? We've been married 54 years. Wow. Woo! That's, that's mighty cool. <laughs> we're trying to, but we're like 31. <laughs> so we're just babies. You are. <laughs> but that's great. I, I had another question for you. How did Ronnie get associated with Elvis? What was the thing that brought that together? Oh, that's a long story. Is it a long story? <laughs> um, he heard about, he, his friend was Larry Mahobrak. I'm going to try and make this short. His friend was Larry Mahobrak, who was playing piano for Elvis. And he was, uh, Ron lived in Texas. And Larry said, they're putting this band together for the um, 69 comeback in Las Vegas for uh, Elvis Presley. And I think you should come out here and audition for that. And so Ron packed up his drum set and jumped on a plane and got out there and I don't think I can tell the story quite as well as he can but he sat in the back of the auditorium where they were doing the rehearsals <clears throat> and the auditions and the guy had gone through they'd gone through several drummers and um, just they were packing up and getting ready to go because they thought they'd found the right guy and uh, <clears throat> I think um, Joe Esposito went over to Colonel Parker and said, well, there's one more guy, and you paid for him to come out here, so you should probably audition him. And Elvis said, oh, okay, well, we'll, we'll do that. So Ron comes up and sat down, and they started in, and Ron just followed everything Elvis did. And the charisma, camaraderie that they had in that one or two songs, that was it. That's cool. That was it. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. That's good. Immediately, don't do it. That's great. Ginger. Uh, let me see if I can find you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your sister Mary is not with us right now. No, she's not. But uh, she says hello. And she misses being here. Well, would you care to explain the situation at all? How's she doing? Let them know 
I mean, I, those of you that know her, uh, my sister had had cancer probably 10 years ago. She's doing great now, except that her immune system's a little weak, and so because of COVID, that's why she was afraid to come and take the risk. But um, every I, I keep including her. I send her pictures every day, and we've told her we all miss her. We've recorded videos and everything, and so she says to tell you hello, and she will be here next time, hopefully. And I'm hoping that we can all sing together. I know, me too. Oh, me too. I've been hogging the microphone. I'd like to go ahead and open the floor up again for a question if you thought of one. I can't see with my glasses. <laughs> Distance. Oh, hi. <laughs> well, oh, I know. <laughs> I don't speak terrier. Uh, <laughs> I have a Yorkie, I do. <laughs> I have a question for Donna Tut. I haven't met you yet. I'm looking to have some conversation with you. Thank you for sharing. And I, I heard that story about how if they met Elvis and it was beautiful. You have shared how you first met Elvis. Have you any other sort of really favorite story about Elvis? that springs to mind. My favorite story mm -hmm. about being with Elvis? Um, <clears throat> well, there were times when he wasn't feeling well. And up in the suite, he would ask Ron and I to come and spend some time with him, because he and Ron spent a lot of time talking. And um, so we, we said sure, and we came in one night, and we we sat with him, we had dinner with him, and he talked with Ronnie about this, that, and the other thing, and um, it it was comforting for him to know that he had somebody he could talk to, confide in a little bit, other than the normal guys, you know, and um, just shared some wonderful moments together. Yeah, that was very special, for sure. Another? Okay, Ginger, same oh. question. Uh-oh. <laughs> your, your fondest memory uh, of Elvis. Memory. Fondest memory of Elvis. You know, um, Donna's right. I mean, you could... You could feel Elvis walk in the room, even if you weren't looking in that direction. And um, I just, I, I actually think that's my fondest memory of being in the in the studio and just feeling Elvis walking down the hall, you know, and then walking into. It, it's just like this um, energy yes. coming getting closer and closer. And then at the same time, he has that kind of humble graciousness and, you know, he's just a country boy, right? Yes. Which we all were, yeah. And so, um, well, some of us were girls. But, um, anyway, I, you know, with, I have a lot of special stories, but this show is not about Ginger, so I'm, I'm just going to say that. That's something really special to have felt, and I think that's why Elvis was so big, is that he had that kind of energy, and yet he had the balance of that humility. And so, um, yeah. Bobby Wood and Gene Chrisman played on the American Sessions, and I had the opportunity to interview them, and they told me that the first time that they met him, they were preparing to record with him, and at some point somebody said, Elvis is in the parking lot. And there was no window to the parking lot. They said you could feel him in the parking lot. Go figure that. They, they knew he was there just because something. He had that. He had that something. I, I was fascinated to hear that, actually. And you know, when he'd do his um, concerts, and he would walk into the building, and of course, all of the employees would just, uh, there was Elvis Presley. And he would walk up to anybody, whether the guy was picking up trash or serving food, right? And he would, oh, 
hello, sir, how are you today? And he, very, very humble man. And he always made you feel special when you met him. Donna Presley uh, is an Arkansas, she's from Arkansas, as am I. And uh, a lot of the ways that we grew up, it was pretty poor. <laughs> pretty poor way growing up. It, everybody farmed and didn't make a lot of money and lived in pretty modest surroundings. And you, you stay fairly humble if you're that way. Because you know, wow, you're just thankful for every day. I'm sure Elvis grew up that way. Yeah. She got to see that side of him. Uh -huh. and, he, and, he, and he he seemed to desperately want to stay in touch with that side of himself where, of where he started as an humble country boy on a poor farm. And uh, in living with him, he had y'all living in his house. <laughs> well, living on the grounds, yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, we were there from the very beginning. And he knew that we loved him because he was just, just plain old Elvis, you know, country boy from Tupelo, Mississippi, who, um, in his words, happened to hit it lucky. Um, I, but I think, I, I know, true enough, Elvis was just an ordinary man, but he was blessed by God to do extraordinary things. And uh, he did it with, with humbleness, with integrity, with love and kindness. He broke every barrier there was between people, whether it was social status, um, economic, uh, racial, religious, political, whatever your beliefs, everybody came together and stood side by side for the love of the man. And, um, you know, if we could continue to do that, how great would this world be? Yes. Um, to have that kindness and just, it's amazing, you know, you've heard the saying that uh, one act of kindness can change a person's life. But that is very, very true. And he was always kind. He always acknowledged everybody in the room. Uh, it didn't matter if you were CEO of a, you know, 500 fortune company, or if you were just, as Donna said, picking up the trash in the in the yard. You were all the same to him. And he, uh, he, he was just a very loving and caring man. And he just he showed that. And you know what? That's why we're all here today. Uh, he was the greatest superstar that ever walked on stage, but he was one of the finest men that ever walked the stage of life as well. And uh, I think that's why we're here, because he touched each and every one of us in a profound way. Whether you knew him or whether you never met him, he still touched your life, and he's still doing so today. So, um, and I'm so thankful for that, and I'm thankful to be a part of that and be a part of the family that uh, raised him and helped him become the man that he was. And they raised me, and I'm thankful for that. And, um, you know, it just continues on. So he did it with grace and humility and honor and integrity, and, and he did the best that he could, and, and he did show the love to everybody. We well, thank you for coming and taking time from your lives to celebrate the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley, with us. And we're proud to be in your city, in your country, and in this part of the world and make new friends with all of you. Thank you. Please give another round of applause to King Lyon, Donna Tuck, Donna Rose, Mr. Holiday, and Donna Presley. We look forward to seeing you tonight and also again tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock for the gospel show. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.